Today's episode is brought to you by the folks over at SeatGeek, the best and easiest to use ticket platform out there. They take the confusion out of buying tickets using a 0 to 10 scoring system and a green is good, red is bad color rating system so you and your loved ones get the best deal possible. So whether it's going to see our beloved Red Legs at Great American Ballpark, the Bengals over at Paycor, FC Cincinnati, one of the area college teams, or pretty much anything in between, use promo code RIVERFRONT at checkout and receive $20 off your first order. Click the link in the show notes to download the app and get started. That's Riverfront, one word, for 20 bucks off. We're here. Wow. Hey, what's up? <laughs> okay. As soon as I press go live and starts playing the intro music, my screen completely freezes and I'm like, okay, so this is fun. <laughs> I'll sit there going through Twitter, going, wait for, you know, everything to end and wait for you to start talking. They're going, um, hello? Well, and I'm in the backstage, I'm like, I'm, I'm like, um, what happened? <laughs> I, I, I don't know. We're back. Hey. Yeah. This is the Bengal Show, presented by the Riverfront. We are here live and in charge because it is the start of free agency or a tampering period for the next 48 plus four hours, 52 hours, which is really dumb, but whatever. Um, <laughs> They've been tampering with each other yeah. since, uh, since the uh, combine. So. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it's amazing how many uh, deals are, are announced at 12 o'clock, which is <laughs> crap crazy. Right. Um, I'm Joe Parsing. Along with me is the Iceman himself, Jeff Trenopole. Jeff, how are you, buddy? Outside of confused, wondering where the hell I am. <laughs> uh, good, man. Good. A uh, little... I, see, I don't know how I feel about this whole Tr T. Higgins thing. Because I'm like, I, I, I'm I, surprised, but then again, I'm not. And I don't... Well, put it this way. One, the Bengals aren't going to trade him unless it's a good deal for them. Right. Two, he's playing on the tag. I mean, if, if unless, unless they trade him. It's $21.8 million. I don't – he's not walking away from that. No. So – and Jonah Williams requested a trade last year. So everybody's freaking out going, oh, my goodness, he wants to trade. But it really doesn't mean anything, to be honest. <laughs> like, all means – this is the only leverage that T has. He has nothing else. That's what sucks about the, uh, the, 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 the franchise tag. Yeah, I mean, this is all a ploy by David Mulligetta. He gets his guys paid. He actually just got uh, Michael Pittman uh, paid by, uh, yep. by the Colts. He was on the franchise tag. And they signed him back to three years, uh, seventy million, I think. I need I to find the actual. Up. Yeah. I yeah. Um, yeah. Pro Football Focus has the deal announced, but not the. Uh, or Pro Football Tech has the deal announced, but not the money. Uh, people are trying are already starting to lose their mind. Why can't the Bengals do that for T? Right. Um, yeah. Number one, T asks for more money. Mm -hmm. Num and number two, um, Michael Pittman is the number one. He is their number one. Like he's a lot bigger <laughs> priority. Yeah, for the Colts than um, uh, than, than the T Higgins and, and not the T Higgins isn't a priority. I mean, he's really uh, he's a hugely important uh, piece, but Mar Chase is you know is the priority. You can get guys around them. Exactly. I I don't expect the trade to happen. I I've been saying it since the end of the season. Since it seemed pretty clear that they weren't going to uh, uh, be able to work out an extension, e even before that, for that matter. I think that they should tag and trade him and, and take the assets. There are a lot of um um. A lot of wide receivers available in the draft. And, 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 I mean, Bengals have two examples. Players can come in as rookies and make an immediate impact. Like, this isn't 10, 15 years ago to where it, it was rare to have someone come in uh, day one and, 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 and be number one. I mean, Chad Johnson was drafted in 01. It was 03, 04 before he really started making much of an impact uh, right. for the Bengals. And, and, and that wasn't, like, that. that's the norm. Yeah, so, it's... it's eh. It just it's funny that Bengals fans always we always lose our minds about we're starting to lose our minds before the, the, the free agency draft team starts now. So I mean but yeah, like I would like to re-sign T. I've said that. I, I I didn't think he was going anywhere. I didn't think the Bengals were gonna trade him. I still don't think the Bengals are gonna trade him. Uh, I think he's gonna play on the, the franchise tag for one year and 
then we'll deal with this again in the offseason next year. You know, and I keep saying this, that it is hard to trade him because, one, first of all, to trade him, I think he's got to sign a franchise tag. I don't yep. think they can trade him without it. So right, now, so, so him requesting a trade right now, he didn't sign the franchise tag as far as I know. So the Bengals can't trade him right now because he didn't right. si- sign the tag. First, he's got to do that. Yeah, then and, I think and, if you find a team, then you got to let that team negotiate with him and his agent to get a longer contract. So it's there's a lot of moving parts. It's not as just it's not as easy as like oh trade him and go get this draft pick, go get that draft pick. And it, it's not it's a lot. There's a lot more more to it than that. I almost wonder if his agent, because like, again, like all of the reports of T asking for a trade, they were unsourced, which means they came from the agent. They didn't come from any, you know, that no one was reporting this. It was coming straight from David Mulgetta's uh, uh, right. firm. Um, I wonder, I doubt it, but you almost wonder if there was a conversation between the Bengals front office, Duke, Kate, wh- whoever, and Mulgetta saying, hey, you can put that out there and start, you know, start negotiating with teams it, if, if they're, you know, Try to find a deal, and if, if if you come with the deal, here's our parameters. Then come to us, because right. then because then Mulligetta can start working out an extension with that team. Because no, yeah, nothing is happening. They've got to find the team that wants to trade him. They've got to find someone who's willing to meet the uh, uh, willing to meet the price that the right. Bengals are asking for, and then you gotta find the team that's willing to extend him. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Because T isn't being traded just on the franchise tag. Right. No. no nobody's no, nobody's no, nobody acquired that. that. That's what that's what I, think. I keep trying to tell people. Like nobody's going to trade for T. On just a franchise tag. I mean, that's just what well, that's just stupid. Why in the world would you do that? Especially yeah. when the, this draft is full of wide receivers. <laughs> so yeah. there's there's no. And that's where another reason where I think it's hard for for T to get what he wants because the, of, of the draft of the draft. So if they trade T, there's more a, a likelihood of it happening after the draft when it full, falls out of, of if teams got wide receivers or not you know if they need a wide receiver after the draft then they might trade him you know which i again i just i don't i don't think they're trading him i just i, I said that from the get-go i don't think they're trading him i think he's gonna play in the franchise tag and i said and the crappy thing is they can tag him again next year i don't think yeah. they will because you gotta pay jamar and you're already paying joe but you can yeah exactly um and, and they, there's room to make everybody fit in here it, it if, if they wanted to make them all work um I don't think it's wise because you saw how many gaping holes there are in the defense. Um, we do have uh, do got another uh, guest in here with me. Let me throw him on real quick. Seth Shaner, host hey. of Red Leg Roundtable. Seth, up? how are oh, you? What up? I'm good. I'm sorry for the delay here. I uh, had some other phone calls, and then here I had to put my equipment all together. So. No That's worries. Okay. I, 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 show I, froze. <laughs> as soon as I hit go live and played the intro, uh, my screen froze up on me, so I had to reboot. So that was... That was an intro. Uh, so we had a, well, probably two minutes of uh, of absolutely nothingness. So well, we, we had, had a very, very nice was, nice picture of the riverfront. <laughs> That's all we had. <laughs> I have a lovely uh, uh, lo- lovely lovely background for everything. So uh, we're just going. I mean, as of right now, it is twelve oh seven, and free agency is dead. There is nothing happening. We all this build up for nothing. The bagel sh- bagel screwed up. They're doing nothing. It's it's N- terrible. Nobody's done anything. Twelve oh one. Uh, two years ago, it was twelve oh one when the Bengals or when uh, Schefter announced uh, uh, Kappa, yeah, the Bengals. Yep. So we are now right. seven minutes past that, and and nothing. Nobody is signing anything. Uh-huh. Are you guys surprised by the amount of teams, amount of teams that are bringing back their own? Like I, I don't. It seems like there's a lot more guys that are signing. I mean, Demario Davis just worked out a new deal for the um, uh, with New Orleans. Um, a, lo- a lot of guys are sticking around their old team, which is kind of surprising. Uh, Landon Dergerson signed a huge deal uh, to, to stick in Philly. Now, that makes a lot of sense because they need that uh, leadership since Kelsey retired. But Well, I'm surprised because I don't remember it happening this close to free agency starting. I, yeah. I think that's kind of where where it's been kind of shocking. But but the idea that, that some of these players weren't going to go to market, I guess, makes sense. But we had heard – I mean, not that the Bengals would have been after these guys, but – but we'd heard back in like January, Baker Mayfield was going to agree to a, a deal, and that's one of those deals where you're scrolling through Twitter and you think, "Oh, well, well, that's a done deal. He'll he'll go back." Well, then a month and a half later, it's like, well, "No, he didn't. He's not there yet." And then yeah. finally, at the last minute, it feels like he did. So, yeah, um, wasn't, it, wasn't it last week that Twitter was blowing up uh, saying that uh, the Bengals were going to release uh, Joe Mixon? Um, <laughs> that still hasn't happened yet. Yeah, exactly. Well, they've got. What is it? I think it's till tomorrow 
I think is it the twelfth, Joe, that the deadline for for his contract on a roster bonus comes up. I for, I'm going to pull it up real quickly here because I can't remember because I mean obviously there's I thought it was so many eighth. different uh, uh, time frames. Let's see, twenty twenty four. Well, and of course, did you talk about Russell Wilson signing with the Steelers? That, that affects the division. Yeah, haven't, haven't gotten there I haven't yet. Got to, I haven't Bengals, gotten to that yet. <laughs> yeah, Bengals have a little bit of uh, catching up to do. Um, Ravens brought back, tagged, and then extended uh, uh, Metabuke. Metabuke? Mm-hmm. Metabuke. Metabuke. I, I, can't. Okay. I always say Metabuke. I don't know if that's right. I, I think that's right. Yeah. I, um, Ravens, or uh, the Ravens, uh, Browns traded for Jerry Judy, who's – he's not a – Number one, he, he's right. probably lower and number two, but I mean, he, he's an improvement. He's an improvement, um, but but I mean, the way some of the Browns fans are acting, like, oh my, we did it again. I'm like, you got who? I'm like, oh, okay. Good right. Job. It, yeah. He's a I bigger mean, name than, than, than a better player. But yeah. yeah I mean, and, and then the Steelers brought, they're bringing in Russell Wilson, which I, I'm still he's like, an improve, it, he's an improvement. I, I, I think I, I put up, I said, I said, is that an improvement? And people are like, oh, yeah, it definitely is. I'm like, Okay. Okay. I mean, I I don't know because I mean the, the the Rudolph. I mean, played fairly good last year. I mean, I I don't know. I just I I, I don't know. It, it, Russell hasn't been good in two years. So well, well, I don't. I mean, what he had twenty four touchdowns and eight interceptions last year. Like he was he was solid last year. He wasn't great. He wasn't Russell Wilson of the Seattle Seahawks, but he also wasn't Russell Wilson of the twenty twenty two. Uh, right, Broncos. right. Well, a lot um, of that came in in a uh, comeback fashion uh, as right. that that Broncos team was pretty bad top to yeah. bottom. So um, that's you know, it is what it is. He, it's just interesting because you know the Steelers as an organization likely aren't going to ask this, the quarterback to be a hero. So, well, yeah, is he okay with that? But is he, you know, the question is, or or is he actually wanting to be the hero? So <laughs> those well, two him, him not not having to be the hero, I think it's better for him because I mean that's pretty much what he how he was in Seattle when they were on their Super Bowl runs is they were relying on their defense and running the ball, you know. Yeah, but he them. always was seemed to be pushing Pete Carroll to want to be more, and that was, yeah. I guess, one of the rumors as to why they went ahead and uh, uh, broke up with him. So Maybe you see why why, why yeah, Pete wouldn't let him do it here the last, last sure. two years. <laughs> yeah. Um, I mean, and, and he's 36 years old. It's mm-hmm. – I, I don't know. It makes the 2024 Steelers better. Mm-hmm. I don't think it makes the 2025, 2020, 20, 26, 27 Steelers better because they're still looking for a guy of the future. Like, obviously, Kenny Pickett wasn't it. That was a terrible – God, what a terrible quarterback draft, 2022. Um, but you're hoping Russell Wilson can be a solid quarterback for a couple years. But yeah, they, they need him to be a bridge quarterback. Well, that's what they need. They need, well, they, to they, need him to, they need him to suck ass so they can actually draft somebody – um, Mike Tomlin doesn't suck ass. So right, that, and that's the he, thing. Never, like, he never like, has like, a pen. They need to. They need to yeah. bottom out. Well, we yeah. we would love to see them bottom out for a long, long time, right? Oh, yeah. As Bengals right. fans, but oh, yeah. but they're that they're that uh, NBA team that goes uh, forty one and forty one every year and just can't get the lottery pick. And yeah. um, well, and, yeah. and at this point, that's why they don't have the the you know the quarterback that they need. Um, certainly, Roethlisberger was a top. You know, they got lucky as hell with him. They got, yeah. they got lucky as hell because he dropped. He dropped to him. Like, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, and and that's part of you know like they were kind of hoping that Kenny Pickett was going to be like that same kind of Roethlisberger mode. Like I don't say diamond in the rough, but um, I mean Roethlisberger was a different situation. He played at a small school. Like it, it's you know, yeah. I, I think today if Roethlisberger came out with the same profile, he would have been top five pick. You look at his size, you look at his measurables and his strength. He would not have fallen that far. Um. Mm-hmm. Kenny Pickett wasn't supposed to be a first round draft pick. He was picked because they needed a quarterback and they didn't, you know, and, and they just didn't want to pass on, you know, the, the, be- the best of who there was. So, well, and if you notice in the draft, there's not that many second round quarterbacks. Yeah. Like what happens is the teams that need a quarterback either trade back up into the first to make sure they get them. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so you end up with quarterbacks that probably don't have first round grades. They get taken higher. I mean, JJ McCarthy's likely to be in the top 10 or 15. I don't think there's enough known about him to say for sure he's a, a top half of the dr- first round guy, but 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 teams that need a quarterback are going to push forward to get that guy. I hope exactly. to God he is. I hope Bo Nix is because that just drops everybody else down for the Bengals. More, more opportunities for us to get that right tackle. I mean, Bengals are going to have they're going to be in a sweet spot. Well, you know, we're talking draft here when uh, when we're here free agency. But I mean, <laughs> the fact that Michael Penix is rumored to be going up high, I. I still think Jaden Daniels is the best quarterback in the draft, but that's another story. We do have a signing here. Um, 
Bears, DeAndre Swift, three years, $24 million. Mm. I like DeAndre Swift. I would have yeah, liked yeah. him on a, you know, cheaper deal. I don't, you know, I, I don't like paying running backs a lot of money. So I'm, I'm, I'm you know, I'm, I'm not uh, too upset about that, but um, I, I think he's a really good running back. who's going to be helpful. You know, I don't know what they're doing at quarterback, but we shall see. He could have been a good option um, to pair with, with um, I'm blanking right now, the Illinois running back we had last Chase, year. Chase Brown. Chase Brown. He could, to pair with him or, or another draft pick. Um, yeah. It's just another domino falling that, that, that the Bengals won't have at back there. There's a Joe, lot what's your there. thought on Joe Mixon? What, what do you think they should do? Uh, you ask me or Joe? You, you, like, you can go ahead, Jeff. You can go ahead. Um, I don't know. I go back and forth. I'm like, I like my my head says to cut him because you want to save that 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 money, you know. But my heart says to, to keep him. I, I don't know what they'll do. I, I that, that that's a hard one for me. I mean, they probably should cut him because you can get two running backs for the same as much as you're going to pay Mixon in in the draft. Um, but he's but the thing is like, is that Gonna hurt you if you just let's put it this way if they do trade T and you cut mix it, that's two pretty big guys that are out of your locker room. Does that change the locker room, you know, it, 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 the atmosphere in, in there too much, you know, from a, a Super Bowl team, a family, or whatever? I mean, do would it hurt it too much to lose those two big personalities if you cut if you cut mix it and you, you draft or trade T? Did before I came on, did you talk about the Schefter report this morning on T? Yeah, that, that, so, that's pretty much all we had hit on. At so that I point. guess, I guess, this could either be you know a fracture in the relationship, or it could just be the dance that takes place between now and a week into a week or two into training camp, a la Jesse Bates, um, waiting to to come. You know, he didn't want to get hurt. You know, before um, he absolutely had to be there. Um, I don't know what to think about about the report on T. I I know Joe Burrow, <laughs> he wants him there. So I would think they would do everything they can to have him. Um, I'm a little surprised that that a trade demand has been made. To be to be honest, well, like Joe I'm, said, it, it came from the agent, not T itself. Mm-hmm. So that's that's a different Go ahead, Joe. Sorry. Yeah, it could be an off season machination of like mm-hmm. these, and that's what you know when people started reporting even before the regular season was over how this could go down. To me, those are just that's just noise until you get to about what uh, the third preseason game or something like that, or right. Right, the second yeah. preseason game, and, and all of a sudden he's back in camp and all is well um, for one more year. Um, I don't know. I, I'd have our time turning down twenty two million dollars. Um, yeah, yeah. He, he's playing next year. Regardless he's playing next year. Yeah. It, yeah. He's not going to leave if if the Bengals can put their feet in the ground and don't move. So, Which I, I don't. Th- Mike Brown's very good at doing that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. The only question that I had was, and I, I don't know how much communication actually happens with the team and the agent outside of actual negotiations. And, and it seems universally accepted the Bengals are done negotiating with T. Um, sure. Was it the Bengals going to Mulligetta and saying, you can put that report out there and start negotiating with teams and come back to us, you know, come back to us to a team interested. And then we'll, you know, we'll worry about the, uh, uh, we'll worry about the draft pick compensation. You worry about the contract. So. I, I, yeah, I don't, I, you know, I, 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 again, I fully expect that T's going to be here. The Bengals just don't make trades, even though they should. Well, I guess what scenario, the scenario, if, if you told me they could trade up into the top 10, say with the Bears' ninth pick, um, trade T for that, and one of the two remaining receivers after Marvin Harrison gets picked is still there, Roma Dunze or, or, or the LSU player. Neighbors, yeah. Mm-hmm. Neighbors. If you told me those two guys are available and you can get them on a rookie deal, um, in exchange for, for T and that's all, you know, I, I guess I would do, I don't know if teams would do that though. Like why would the bears do that? If they could get the same deal with a Dunze and have five years to pay him a lower, a lower rate. That was my question with, uh, there's a lot of thought or a lot of talk about the, um, Carolina Panthers who don't have a first round pick because they traded up last year to get Bryce Young, that they would be interested in looking to trade for either T Higgins. And this was reported a day or so ago before even the news dropped, uh, but they, they'd be looking to either uh, acquire T Higgins or Michael Pittman. And Michael Pittman obviously went back to the Colts uh, on an extension instead of just the franchise tag. Why wouldn't they just keep that pick? And I, you know, they've got a quarterback on a rookie deal. So you've got, they have four years um, 
before a quarterback gets expensive if Bryce Young lives up to what you know to what he uh, they think he's going to be. But I would rather do what the Bengals have done multiple times and get a young wide receiver to pair with the quarterback. I mean, they drafted um, AJ yeah, Green the same year. They drafted Higgins. yeah, yeah. They drafted AJ Green the same year. They drafted um, Andy Dalton. They drafted mm-hmm. Higgins and then Chase the very next year. So yeah, the the, the two schools of thought are. You want a veteran to be there to kind of settle the young quarterback, I yeah. suppose. Um, yeah. But the Bengals' own track record here shows that this might be the better way to go, and yeah. and it might betray what they can get for Higgins as far as that top ten goes. Yeah, exactly. I mean, if there's a way they could trade up and ensure that they're going to get uh, Marvin Harrison Jr., <laughs> yeah, sign me up. But I don't think the Bengals, unless they trade their first and Higgins – uh, to move up into like the top five, which I don't even know if that would be enough. They'd still have to add some more uh, assets. I, I don't think that's, you know, that that's the only guy that I would move way up for as opposed to just trading him for a pick. And well, the, they're, the is, Bengals are in a, a position of, of of good negotiating here. They they can sit there and say, we're not giving anything. Uh, we're not giving Higgins straight up for anything other than a top 10 pick, and they can just wait. And, oh, then, but, and yeah, then that's Bengals why have- they probably don't ever make trades is because they, they, they stand their ground so well. Well, let's yeah. say the Bengals, Bengals have all the leverage. I mean, mm-hmm. they, 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 they don't have to do anything. I mean, they, they could just, hey, you play on the franchise tag, and that's that's it, which is what I, I, I think is most likely to happen. Now, the question, uh, Joe, said, if you, if, if you move up uh, to get you know top five pick, do you are you taking a wide receiver then, or are you fixing that gaping hole on the right-hand side of your offensive line? Are you taking one of the top right tackles? Hmm. I, we'll see how that plays out over the yeah. next couple of days. Because you can get there are you can get a good wide receiver to second round too. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it, it really depends on what happens in the next couple of days. And I mean, there's a chance that the Bengals can fill up a ton of their holes, so they don't have to pick. I mean, I I would rather them draft a right tackle and have that guy, so you're not looking every two years trying to find someone to replace because you're not you don't have that guy to where you're just kind of getting fill ins. But yeah. a couple guys in the in the. Uh, Chat here. Yeah, I was gonna. Uh, I was gonna ask. Yeah, go uh, gonna put this up. Uh, Tim Daniel, our good buddy, host of Late Night Reds and Riverfront U. Thoughts on Kendall Fuller as a Bengal as uh, fit as rumored? I would be all aboard. Absolutely all aboard, Kendall uh, Fuller. He's a cornerback. Last played in Washington. Um, he's older. He's twenty nine. He will be play the entire season in his a twenty nine season or at at a twenty nine. Um, I still think he's a fantastic cornerback. I would love. For that to happen, I don't. I wonder if the Bengals maybe are less high on DJ Turner as we thought they were because he kind of fell back to earth after uh, uh, after a really hot start of the season, especially the second half. He wore down, but that just adds more depth into that room. I would be completely on board with that. Seth, what do you think? Yeah, I think so. Um, I trust. I often go to Twitter and just search out the the writers or the people that I trust, and Ben Standig of the Athletic. He's covered Washington for a long, long time, and he has. He says he's likely not coming back to Washington, and he's got the Bengals as the top of the list of the teams interested. So, um, and and knowing who he who Fuller is as a player, I agree with you, and it doesn't hurt. I mean, certainly this team, even going back to um, the Leon Hall, Jonathan Joseph days, has has had depth at that position, mm-hmm. and, and and if DJ Turner is your third or fourth guy, then I, I think there's nothing wrong with that and getting him to keep growing in the game. Yeah, yeah I'm uh, down for it. I, I don't. I don't have. There's nothing wrong with ever having too much depth, ever. <laughs> so if if it f- uh, works out money money wise, number wise, and he's under thirty, <laughs> it's, that's. I mean, he's a year under, but he's under thirty. That's the, the threshold for the Bengals. It seems like here, here here lately. So I would definitely be down for it. Yeah, I mean, it's m- more depth, more talent is better. Um, but again, it's. Mike Hilton is going into his last year of his deal. I don't know if either if any of those guys are kind of a slot corner type fit, but again, like I, you know, so long as the money, and I don't think the money's going to be super high. I think I saw like maybe thirteen million or something like that. I would absolutely do that. Well, Fuller's um, last deal was a four year, forty million dollar contract with the with then Redskins, uh, included a twelve point five million dollar signing bonus. So he he's had his bigger contract, um, and and as you said, getting twenty nine is that scary fulcrum type age where um this might be his last chance to get a, a decent deal but but he's not going after this he's not getting a huger deal so yeah um, so, it might be the exact right time to get him 
Adam Schefter is reporting uh, Bill is three-time Pro Bowler left tackle Deion Dawkins is signing a three-year $60.5 million ex- extension. An extension. That's yep. what's hilarious is literally two minutes ago, um, there, or here's something from 12 minutes ago from Deion Dawkins uh, that, that he put on his socials. It was good while it lasted, Buffalo. Excited for this next chapter of my football <laughs> career. Wonder if it's okay to eat ranch now. <laughs> and then, Not, then I signed 10 him. minutes later. Yep. <laughs> Well, sixty point five million to keep you on blue cheese for a long time, I guess. Yeah, I, I don't. Yeah. I don't think I, I like can, this. Even Mal- for sixty million, I don't know if I can handle. I don't know. If I can I don't know. <laughs> Mal- Malik Wright is uh, reporting that the the uh, Lions have a serious interest in DJ Reader. As they should. That that's a guy that I want and, to keep DJ. I know, and 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 it's hard. I struggle to figure out like where the fit is in terms of when's he going to be healthy. Um, yeah. This is his second that's, major, yeah. second Which, major injury in a few years. The guy, I mean, just, just for culture, just for right. culture, I would love to keep that guy around. Well, that's why I'm surprised people are talking about him already. Because mm-hmm. I, I thought he might be a guy that would sign, you know, later on, like June or something like that, because of the injury. Because you don't know when it's coming back. I'm kind of, makes, I'm kind of surprised that other teams are seriously talking about him. Yeah, right. I would think. I think even for Reader himself, he could make more money later because right. he could prove that he was more healthy. Right. Yeah, they're healthier. Um, but but I, of any team out there, I completely get why um, uh, why the Lions would because they need help on the defensive front, and he's an absolute like I said culture guy that that fits uh, definitely fits what their coaching staff is trying to do. So that makes a whole lot of sense. I am trying to pull up Spot Track, which is a fantastic resource. Um, their servers have to be so overwhelmed. I'm trying to just pull up market <laughs> what they have mar- listed as market value for Kendall Fuller. Again, I'd seen on um, a couple different places on on Twitter that 13 million or something like that. Um, but yeah, there's it, it's just what? spinning its wheels right now. Maybe that's what I'll blame. I'll bring spot uh, spot track for my uh, uh, my computer going down All on right, me earlier. So listen to this, Daniel J- Jugaport, I guess from the Athletic. He says breaking Patriots are close to trading for Bengal star T Higgins. Ooh, who's this guy? Uh, da- Dan, it's from he's from the athletic Daniel J- Judge E A P R T E Port. Where, where do uh, it's the Judge? Yeah, the Patriots have that higher draft pick, don't they? Yeah, they're top five because he, he said the writer for the athletic and it says no figure. So, I, I I'm no, 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 it says parody. His account it says parody. I don't, I don't know. Oh, that's yeah, it? that's the, the, the Judge Dan. Yeah, so oh, I'll that on here. That got, that got me on it. Got me on it. All right. Boy, oh boy. Going, what? Yeah, well, boy. Welcome to Cincinnati, Joe Alt. Yeah. <laughs> Although he's got 2,300 followers. I, no fake news. I'm, I'm confused. Are, yeah, are I don't know. 2,300 I'm... people that followed him? Um, <laughs> my, buddy, my buddy Bengals and Bourbon retweeted and put with the, the looking guys. I'm like, what? I'm looking like, I was trying to hey. double check, see, okay, is this real? Is this fake? Who is this dude? This guy yeah. also said uh, 23 minutes ago that the, the uh, Patriots were signing Derrick Henry. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, so I don't know about this one. <laughs> yeah, I, I, yeah, I think I, I think I think it's I like a cross get... between Daniel Jeremiah. That's what I yeah, think. Yep. Um, and Rapp- Ian Rappaport. Ian yeah. Rappaport, and yeah. Well, lots of Bengals uh, uh, Twitter is retweeting this now. Bengals talk just retweeted it. <laughs> the um, <laughs> don't fall his, for the cheese. Yeah, his yeah. profile pic is um, picture of Mac Jones. So. Yeah, <laughs> and yes, Tim. The stupid check mark rules. There's a like, screw off, Elon Musk. Like, there's a, like people get go to social media to get reliable news sources. Oh, and... you can't figure it out now. You gotta look exactly. Oh, that, that was the whole thing last week with the Joe Mixon news. I'm like, who's reporting this? I'm like, you know, I'm like, that's what I'm like. I believe it when I see it. Oh, uh, but... uh, March 18th is the um, oh, is okay. the roster bonus. So they they yeah. got a week. And that was purposely done because remember last year it just lasted so long and mm-hmm. and we were wondering why they didn't um, sign somebody at free agency in March and then they took a later draft pick in Chase Brown and yeah and then they finally got the thing done there in like yeah. June and uh, uh, yeah I think it's way better to have it now and, yeah. you know that way everybody knows they're on equal footing they they know what they need yeah exactly so um, now if they sign a running back here in the next day. <laughs> that March 18th deadline, yeah. we can just make some assumptions. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah. They, 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 if they sign one the next day, yeah, I, I think he's uh he's gone then. <laughs> you always wonder if, if they're possibly just looking to uh, see if there's any deal to be had or anything like that. Well, no, I don't think anybody's going to pay Joe Mixon eight I, million dollars next year. So I highly doubt it. The Bengals shouldn't. Again, I I'm of the ilk that draft running backs on day two, sec, uh, second or third round, let them play their rookie deal out the door. And again, like that sucks because running back is a really hard, um, really hard position to play. And there's a lot of toll on your body and they deserve to get paid as much as they, you know, as much as possible, but I don't want to pay them. I, I just don't think that the value is there. Mm -hmm. So we are still timed out on spot track. <laughs> Uh, I, did, did their hamster fall off? Oh, there we go. I was going to say, did their hey! hamster fall off the wheel? Let's see. Yeah, they're saying three years, $41 million average deal of, you know, for his age, linear regression, blah, 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 blah. Average $13, $14 million a year, which, again, I'd, I'd be on board for that. That That's not huge money. The Bengals have the space, especially if they were to do something with T. Higgins. Mm -hmm. That's why I, I think T just playing on the tag is not great. Because they, that's a huge cap hit. Either extend him so you can manage the cap better or trade him and take that money and spend. Like, again, you need a lot of help, especially on the defensive uh, uh, defensive interior and edge. Yeah. I mean, they, they need help yeah. all on the, all, on the line. They need more I, I'm, depth. Not, I'm not as worried about ed the edge. I'm, more, I'm really concerned about the interior. I mean, if you, you can if, never have enough edge rushers. You can, no, no, you can in, never in, have in enough. But I, mean, but I mean, we don't have any. We got DJ. Uh, or PJ Hill. That's it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that's literally all, all we have. I mean, I, you, know, you can say Zach Carter or something, but he unless he develops a lot, uh, makes a bigger jump this year, which we didn't see anything last year. BJ Hill's the only one we got, so I'm really concerned about the interior. I, I never know? understood the whole thing with Zach Carter. Like they drafted him, he was he was an edge, and he was a tweener. Like he was a bigger edge and struggled. Like it was a guy that you didn't think would be able to hold up physically, uh, or you know ha had the speed uh, to make it around the uh, make it around the edge, but. They drafted him knowing they were going to bulk him up to play three technique. Like, why don't you just draft a three technique at that point? <laughs> and, and, and clearly, two years in, like, it hasn't worked. He, he was terrible. He, he was just, just. I mean, I like the guy. I've got nothing against him. I'm sure he's a wonderful young man. He's not an NFL uh, tackle. I don't. You know, go go play for the USF XF L E I E I O, whatever the heck that new league is. He, he can go play he's, with uh, AJ McCarron. Right, exactly. So, this is boring right now, guys. Albert <laughs> well, Breer, I wondered. Uh, <laughs> uh, Albert, Albert Breer's uh, Dolphins got a nice bargain on tight end Jonas Smith, two year deal. Oh, Johnny Smith, yeah, he signed yeah, a couple yeah. of years ago. Which, yeah, I mean that that's decent money. Yeah. I would you. I had so I did my top my my countdown of uh, top five guys for the I wanted the Bengals to sign. Um, number five, I had. Actually, I forget my list. Wow, you you, you think I'd be better at, at, at knowing my uh, who my guys are? <laughs> uh, number five, Geno Stone uh, as a safety. What do you guys think about him? He's uh, got picked off Joe Burrow in the second half in uh, week two against Baltimore. Really smart guy coming off a uh, rookie deal in Baltimore. What are your guys' th thoughts about him? I mean, I don't necessarily like the take guys just so you can hurt your division rivals, but that would be one of my reasons for wanting to do that. I don't, yeah. I guess if, if you look at the, the Baltimore scuttlebutt through Twitter and in, in the news, he's, he's had some issues over the years with tackling and things like that. Um, and it, you know, it's kind of like as a Reds fan, seeing a guy like Bill Hall for the Brewers, you're like, Oh, <laughs> why can't the Reds get that guy? But he only played well against the Reds. So, right. um, you know, it, I don't know. I, I guess if you could weaken them, um, and, and Iceman, if you could tell me again the name Anabuque or Anabuque, uh, that was the guy from the Ravens. I won it. That, you know yeah, I mean? All with you. I, that's who I want. You know what I mean? That would weaken yeah. them and strengthen yeah. the Bengals. So absolutely. Um, absolutely. I don't know that Stone would do that for the Bengals, but I don't necessarily think it'd be a terrible signing. I, I, it, it would be an improvement. Um, I don't think the Bengals know what to do with Dax Hill right now. Mm-hmm. I, I'm surprised Nick Scott is still a on contract. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, he, there's no way he's playing next year, right? I mean, his no, number, he won't be on the team. I mean, they I drafted Jordan Battle so. because he fell to them, and Jordan Battle was fantastic. Yeah. Well, I mean, so, so like, for for me, I, I, I want a veteran safety in that room regardless. Um, yeah, I do like the idea of hurting <laughs> the, the Rapids. 
But when you say he has tacking, tackling issues, that, that worries me because yeah. that was Nick Scott. He couldn't tackle anybody. <laughs> he would be there and try to blow him up, and they'd bounce off of him and run for another five yards. Yeah, but to make up for his lack of tackling, he was also terrible at, at coverage. In coverage, too. yeah. <laughs> exactly. exactly. Hey, uh, going back on your Zach Carter comments, Joe, um, I, was, I was thinking of Draymond Jones, who was an Ohio State player. And he was a defensive end, but they they kicked him inside, and he goes to the Broncos, and he signed a big deal last year with with the uh, Seahawks. Um, sometimes those guys work out as that three technique, um, and then other times they don't, obviously, because yeah. as you were saying, why don't you draft a guy who played the actual position in college? Um, but Draymond Jones played on the outside throughout his Ohio State career and then kicked inside um, with the Broncos and got a nice payday. So it, it does happen. Um when I think of defensive tackle, though, I always wish we could find our uh, Vince Wilfork or <laughs> Lodi Nada. You know, yeah. like get that. And, and BJ Hill's done a great job these last few years, and technically a little bit different position. But, um, but boy, I, I I've always coveted those those really really big guys who, all the, by the way, can actually also move. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, there are a ton, and, and I put Ke- uh, uh, Gino Stone out there before a lot of these safeties got the axe. It was a Dark, dark week if you're a safety in the NFL last yeah, week. Yeah, it was. Like almost um, like running backs. Yeah, yeah absolutely. And, I, and I there know, what, five of them? Got five of them? Five, lot. six of them? Yeah. A lot, a lot of them are older. I mean, Justin yeah. Simmons, former All Pro, he's 30. Uh, Micah Hyde, 33. But I mean, there are some absolute dudes out there. Xavier McKinney, uh, again, I, I like Geno Stone. Yeah, he, yeah, he uh, isn't the cleanest, you know, doesn't exactly have the cleanest sheet. But uh, I mean, Jamal Adams is out there. I mean, the, Buda Baker, I mean, got named guys. Now, whether or not they, you know, th- these guys are more names than they are fits or anything like that. I mean, there's, I would be surprised if the Bengals didn't get, uh, didn't sign one of these guys before too long. Well, and that, and that my question is, is, if they do, are you guys kicking Dax to corner or are you trying to play the, uh, the three safety uh, lineup more? Which, I mean, if you do that, then one of your linebackers is going off. So they, I answer? mean, I think they can uh, do a nickel, uh, three safeties and a nickel. So you still, you know, you still run your two, uh, two linebackers. I think they need to figure out what Dax Hill is before, but they, they can't rely on him to be a safety. Cause he's not a safety. He's not a, like, not a cornerback. They, they need to find a role for him. So you, you plan on having an 11 man starting defense where he's not one of them. Hmm. Well, if you go back to your Zach Carter argument, I mean, there's a reason he never played corner in college. Yeah. There's a reason he didn't play corner here. I mean, he yeah. was pressed into duty a time or two at the end of the 22 season. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I don't know. There's a reason he's put there at safety. I, w- would he be the heir apparent to Hilton if after that's, Hilton's contract? That's what over? I think. I, that's can, what I can, think. Can he play? Can he play up at the line? Can he start up at the line of scrimmage? Um, yeah, I, I think yeah, he can blitz off the edge. Yeah, I, he, I think he'd be. be He's fast. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Now the thing, the one thing I'll put this out there for you guys too is, if you guys remember when uh, Bates and Bell were in Lou's system the first two years, they weren't that good either. They didn't really start getting really good until the Super Bowl run. So, to me, that's where I'm still kind of like, well, maybe there's there's some more two decks. Maybe you know there there's that they, they, they can improve upon it this year. That's why I haven't totally given up on him as a safety yet. I, I want a veteran in that room. As a fall guy, you know, or you know, backup in case in case it, Dax doesn't improve. Well, Lou and Arumo's earned that right. If if, mm-hmm. if and and we've had you know, there's been coaches here before. I wouldn't say that about, but but Lou, if he says these are my two safeties, he in battle again. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I might be skeptical, but I'm not going to question it completely yep. until I see it on the field and and right. can decide if we think oh he he's not the he, that's not it. Right. Yeah, it's completely reasonable. I mean, I, I would not be upset if they go in with those two guys as their starting safeties. Uh, I, again, besides Luana Romo having her trust as a defensive coordinator, what's his background? He's a secondaries guy. Yes. Mm-hmm. So, he, I mean, he knows what to look for and, you know, traits and ability of, of what uh, what you need in the backfield. So, yeah, I absolutely would give him the uh, uh, benefit of the doubt. But they do need someone else there who's not Nick Scott to fall back on. It's not Did Mike you, Scott, as, as you keep saying multiple, multiple times, Jeff. You've been good so far today, but usually you you, you drop to a Mike Scott instead of Nick Scott. Did I say? Did I say Mike Scott? 
You called him Nick today. I'm just, I'm just, oh, oh, just right. reminding you ahead of time. Like, <laughs> yes. giving you well, credit. That, that, now you're going to screw me up. Now, now that's just it. Mike. Yeah, now you're going to make me screw it up now. You are welcome. Uh, Vikings are signing I, yeah, uh, just, Texans edge rusher Jonathan Greener. Yeah, that, yep. that's a good signing. I, I don't know what the money is. Probably more than the Bengals wanted to put out in the edge since they already have big money in um, – um, big money in Hubbard who they, they need to do something with that deal. I like but Hubbard, you, but his what he makes and the production that you get from him – aren't compatible. I don't know. Did He's you guys culture. report before I got on on Travion Williams re-signing? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I'm fine with that. He's making the league minimum mm-hmm. for, uh, for a veteran um, and good special teams guy. So that means they're probably going to keep four running backs. Now who the other guys are, I'm not really sure. Uh, I do got another question from, from Tim here. Best route at tight end, hoping you can get Bowers in the draft or go and get a free agent. Um. What are your guys' thoughts on drafting the tight end in the first round? I will put that right there. <laughs> I, I guess that. seeing how Kyle Pitts has turned out and seeing how all these guys are usually later rounds, I would say it's probably best not to. Um, but knowing you don't have Tyler Boyd anymore and knowing you might not have T. Higgins this year or next, uh, <laughs> Brock Bowers as more of a – I mean, he'd be a tight end still, but he'd be he'd be as much a slot as anything, right? I mean oh, – yeah. Yeah. Um, you play a lot of 12 personnel with him, I would assume. Yeah. Um, knowing I, I would that, love, I would love to see them play, play a lot of 12 personnel because it makes you less predictable. Knowing that I would say I would, I would draft, draft him if he's there. Certainly at yeah. 18. Uh, for me, uh, I've always, I keep saying this, it depends on what to do at right tackle. Cause right tackle, we don't have a right tackle. There is no right tackle on our roster right now. So it, it depends on what they do at free agency. And, if they don't sign one, which I think they will, then I'm drafting a right tackle. And I, even if they do sign one, I still might draft a right tackle. <laughs> so that that to me is more important. I mean, they should have drafted a freaky tight end last year. Last year was a draft a damn tight end, and, and they didn't. Um, so for me, I, I'm drafting a right tackle almost, almost no matter what. <laughs> I mean, if even if Bowers is there, because you got to protect nine, and we can get. Joe has proven he can take these guys that are okay tight ends and make them look really, really good. I mean, look at Tanner Hudson. I mean, Tanner Hudson, I thought, did really well for the for the Bengals last year. Uh, you know, Hayden Hurst year before that, C.J. Uzama. So, yes, getting Brock Bowers would be elite. I think it would be awesome. But we need we need a right tackle. So that, uh, that's kind of where I'm at. I can't get past that <laughs> to, to, to draft. And, and like you said, and, and Kyle Pitts, I mean, they – Drafted him, and what's he done? But he, he really hasn't had a quarterback either. My the, uh, problem with with t- tackle or bust is a lot of people are saying that beyond the first few, and and so they're at eighteen. There might be first round tackles, but they might not be ready to play right away. Right. Um, well, that's why. That's why I might sign one. Yeah, you got to sign one. But yeah. yeah, this this is win now mode, especially if you you keep T this year. Yeah, um, that's why. I, and I don't know if I'm comfortable with having a rookie right tackle. <laughs> that's why right. I, so, I want to sign one. <laughs> so I guess I would sign one, and even if it's a Riley Reef type um, who's serviceable with the rest mm-hmm. of the line that we have right now, mm-hmm. I, I would sign one, and then and then if, if Bowers is there, I would still take Bowers um, because Bowers helps you win now more than a, t- a tackle that sits on the bench all year and waits for next year. Yeah, I, th- I think absolutely they're going to get a guy uh, a tackle in free agency, and, and that kind of leads me into uh, who I had as my number four fit for the Bengals, uh, Jermaine Illuminor. Yes. Um, yeah, and, and, and he's solid. He's a solid right tackle. Played, I, I, he's played both sides of the line uh, with the Raiders last year. He's been with the Patriots. Um, seems to be a good fit, and he's a guy, again, you sign, and then you still look to get a long-term um, prospect Again, whether mm-hmm. that's 18, whether that's at 45 or anything like that. Because um, I don't think you can afford to go in to the draft trying to find your starter. I, I hate going into the draft trying to find your starter at any yeah. position. Um, unless yeah, you're in the top absolutely, five. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, unless you're, five, you, yeah. Like, you know, yeah. you're either reaching or, you know, you're getting the guy that, you know, I, or you can do what the Bengals did in 2015 and draft um, a way he, knowing that he's not going to play, and drafting Drake Fisher, letting Witt go. And, and I was completely on board with that when that happened. Um, 
like they actually drafted guys a, a year ahead, which was a smart thing. And then they both just crapped out, and then everyone shits on them for uh, for letting Andrew Whitworth go. Like I was fine with that. Yeah, so, hindsight so, was more the problem there. Yeah, exactly. Whitworth, it just, Whitworth it had a Fisher. lot more than the tank. <laughs> yeah, F- Fisher had so. heart issues, and mm-hmm. uh, oh boy, he just never, you know, oh boy, he was the wrong guy. But I, I think that's oh boy, not a he theory. was a swinging gate. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that he was. Uh, exactly. The Titans are expected to sign running back Tony Pollard. Just saw that. That's yeah, good Aaron Wilson reporting this from the NFL. Yeah, so that's interesting there. Uh, so Derek Henry most likely would not be going back to the Titans. Somebody was asking me that that this weekend. Would you want to sign uh, Derek? You know, if they cut Mixon, sign Derek Henry. My my fear with that is this might be the year that he falls off a cliff. You know, because of all the hits he's taken, because of how many times he was used. You know, in Tennessee. You know, it, it happens pretty quick for a running back. All of a sudden, they, they just hit that wall. And they're just not the same. And that's that was my would be my concern with with signing Derek Henry for the Reds or Reds, mm-hmm. for the Bengals. <laughs> I'd be really concerned if the Reds signed him. I would too. I'd be. <laughs> He'd be he'd they, be a great. I'd say my first base. He'd be good, a good target. They, they need a right-handed hitting outfielder who can prefer to play center field. I don't know if he's that guy. He seems more of a uh, maybe corner <laughs> corner bat, big stocky guy. I don't know how well he can go uh, go get him in the gaps. Right, exactly. Um, but yeah, I, I I've seen that rumor for a year. Uh, Bengals mm. would be in for uh, for Derrick Henry or for Saquon Barkley, and and it never made any sense to me. Bengals are looking to get cheaper and younger and more explosive at the uh, running back position. Neither of those guys are going to be cheaper. Neither of those guys are going to be younger. And I I don't know. I'm done with the Bengals being efficient at running back. Joe Mixon is efficient. He'll get if you three yards. Jonathan Greenard. Yeah. Did you say that? You say that yeah. already? Okay. You already right. said that. Did I? Oh. You did. There's too many things going on. I'm trying to listen to you and keep, keep on this. Does <laughs> <laughs> uh, that work out to you? Sorry, go ahead. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I'm, I'm done with the Bengals getting three, four, you know, three yards. Power. I need some, I want someone who's going to break off 20 yard runs. He's going to rip off, uh, the 60 yard run for a touchdown. They haven't had that guy since Corey Dillon. I, 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 I <laughs> yeah, I, I, I don't want to think it's been that long. I mean, that's been 20 years now. Uh, Gio, well, maybe. Cedric Vincent sometimes gave you that, but he was, yeah. he was more of the, the, the bandaid. The efficient. Yeah. Um, yeah. Because Green uh, Ellis and Rudy Johnson didn't give you that, so it might no. it might go back to Dylan if you don't count some of the Benson runs. Um, Jeremy Hill had a couple. He had an eighty-five yarder against the uh, yeah, Panthers, I think, speed. one time. Geo had um, yeah, he just couldn't hold on to the damn ball. Um, I, I, Gio I, I, definitely Spence, had the Gio had the wiggle to be able to. He didn't have the breakaway speed, but he had the wiggle to uh, break out and bust long runs. I expunged uh, Hill from my memory as a Bengals fan. I, I don't know. Who he's, I, don't, I don't know who the guy is. Yeah, I've got an <laughs> autographed football by him that my stepdad gave me that I tried to get rid of the day I got it. So, and that was when he was still bad. with the team. <laughs> uh, gee, thanks. You you feel bad for him because like obviously the guy didn't like he wasn't trying to fumble. The only reason he was in there is because Ryan Shazier tried to take off uh, Gio Bernard's head. But mm-hmm. well, yeah. I, I'm more irritated when he started trolling Bengals fans after he won a ring with the Patriots and didn't do anything. Yeah, that, he, that did he even, I don't think he even played. Did he, didn't did he even play. dress? Yeah, uh, he, yeah, did he I, even dress? I don't even. I have no idea. But he didn't play. I know that, and he's trolling Bengals fans. I'm like, dude, shut yeah. up. Well, Joe, we've talked about. Uh, I know the one night we we got into a philosophical discussion about college sports, but uh, yeah. we, we talked about the fact I'm a Ohio State fan, and as an Ohio State fan, I try to be as analytical as possible as do I want the Bengals to draft this Ohio state player? Mm -hmm. And I remember the one guy I was on board for was when they drafted Jeremy Hill, I wanted them to take Carlos Hyde. Um, And there was some mixed results for both players. Both had Mm -hmm. a thousand yard season here or there, um, but neither of them became great, great NFL players. So I guess, and the one I was really wrong on was Billy Price. So I, I am very guarded (laughs) because he was just BJ Hill. Yeah. (laughs) Yes, yeah, well, yeah. yeah, the return for him was was great, especially uh, my son and I were at the Vikings game, and to see that uh, B.J. Hill interception in person oh. was really cool. So, what, What's your thoughts on Ohio State's uh, tight end? Uh, Pete Stover. Pete Stover. Yeah. Um, he, he's good. He's very good. Um, he's very uh, – the pro- well, I guess one of the problems I'd say is he's a lot like Billy Price was because I, because I think of him as very strong and tough as nails and those kind of things. Um, he's a farm kid. Mm-hmm. Uh so uh, I, I like him a lot, but I will say in his time as a featured guy, which was only really two seasons, 
he did get injured enough to make me worrisome. Like I, 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 I don't know. Like, you know, he, he's very, he played 2022, basically. You remember the Gronk uh, sleeve that he had to wear, like the, yep. the, the elbow. Um, I agree with this. So Joe is always wrong. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, go, sorry. Way, but no, out. so he played he played that year with that uh brace on his arm a lot like Gronk did at times and he you would see him catch and he would like he would have to like clap his hands together <laughs> to catch it because he couldn't bend his elbow. Yeah. But he still had a good season. Right. Um so he played through some things, but then he also missed some time. And um if he was if he if you told me he was going to be the feature tight end for the Bengals next year, I don't know that I would I would really want that necessarily. Yeah, he he's he, he, Intriguing for me because because I, yeah. I think there's potential there to there to, is to be be really good, but then the 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 injuries do concern me. I see. I would be totally on board with them draft. I don't know. Is he, he's C late day two pick because it's thinking. Yeah, I would say yeah. third or fourth. Okay, third yeah. fourth. Um, yeah, I would be cool with that if they go out and sign a veteran. And and this again, you you guys have set me up perfectly here. Uh, I, I put these all on uh, YouTube Shorts, but my number three uh, free agent fit for the Bengals is Noah Fant, tight end from yes. Seattle. Yes. I'd like that. He's, uh-huh. Yeah, he's got the athletic ability. He's got the speed to stretch the seam, uh, cover two breakers, and I would love to see that guy again. He's still, I think he's 26. He's not an old guy. Sign him to a three, three-year three deal, front-loaded, whatever you want to do, um, and then draft a guy. Because, again, you need multiple guys. I'm concerned the Bengals haven't done anything at tight end yet. They have zero tight ends, literally no tight ends. None. Um, I had expected that Drew Sample or Tanner Hudson or both would have been uh, locked down already. And neither of them are, which is like, can we like? Do they think that they're going to get money elsewhere? Like, they're not going to get a ton of money, so just pay them what they want. Yeah, I think I'm, so. I, got I mean, I guess, but if nobody's signing them, then maybe just that market hasn't taken off yet. So, um, but but we know what happened last year when they just stuck in the, their head in the sand, right? I mean, exactly. That's that's what I'm afraid of. I don't want to do that again. Exactly. And, and I'm completely cool with Drew Sample and Tanner Hudson back. As yeah. guys in the room, like I, I don't. Tanner Hudson was very good, and his numbers actually, for the limited times, actually comparable to what Hayden Hurst had for the full season. Um, Hurst had like four hundred some odd yards over the full season in twelve games, and Hudson didn't like didn't even get the most second or third on the uh, tight end list for uh, snaps. Uh, so. Three hundred fifty, yeah, three hundred fifty uh, yards receiving, more yards per catch. So I, I would love Hudson to be back as another guy in the room. Through sample, I think as a H back, move back, you know, whatever you want to call him, like as a traditional in line, and then having him as your um, protector on third downs, I think that's a fantastic, uh, fantastic move to keep him around. So I'm, I'm surprised that like you need those guys in your room. This isn't like you're taking a spot of someone more um, explosive. You you need bodies in the room. You have an empty tight end room right now. Right. Well, uh, I do want to address this again real quick. Joe is always wrong. I would love for everyone to go watch my draft preview show that I have that we did. Um, I mocked the Bengals getting Miles Murphy in the first round. Jeff, who did the Bengals draft in the first round this year? Uh, Somebody named Miles Murphy, I think. I thought so. Okay. I just just want to be sure. You were right on the pick, but were you wrong on the uh, capability? (laughs) No, it was because that was it, it, it wasn't. This wasn't like the guy I was in love with. It was just the guy that I thought made sense. Sure. Um, he was drafted for 2024, which, again, I I would have loved for someone else to have made that pick because the Bengals needed more of an impact, you know, more of an edge impact. And, and I think they expected Joe Osai to have a mm-hmm. bigger year, which he just was a ghost until the very end of the season. But so um, did, did you guys see the Packers released a five-time All-Pro left tackle, David Bakari? Yep. Yeah, no, he's he's old. <laughs> still they released him i know that's i i'm, I'm seeing people already like saying like oh Bengals, like no don't don't leave, leave him alone Bengals. he's old and, yeah. uh, tony pollard's getting three years 24 million that that's i mean it's less than what they were paying in uh derrick henry but you have a huge armed quarterback and i, I love ty j spears like uh, the guy they got out of Tulane last year jonathan greenway is getting four years 76 million i saw that Whew. um the thing with I, Pollard though is he's younger, so yeah. I mean, he did not have a great season last year. No, and, and maybe that you know I don't know if that gave him a smaller deal, but eight years per man, I don't. Well, who who knows how it's structured? They may be yeah. releasing him or restructuring it after year one. Yeah. For all we know, 
Yeah, exactly. They, they, these are this is all just fake phony money anyway. The guarantee it is what really is important, and we don't you're not going to find out the bulk of that stuff until Wednesday until they can start putting pen to paper. Man, Swift to power twenty four million dollars. Jeez, that's big yeah, that's that damn. like wow. That's great, great man. Mm-hmm. Again, I, I, good that on makes, that with, makes Mixie look cheap. <laughs> good, you know, good on uh, good on money. Like, yeah. I think, like good on running backs for getting money. Um, well, Mixon looks cheap, but he his production isn't with those guys the last year or so. So yeah, exactly. Um, so you, I don't know if it does make him look cheap because eight million dollars as he's much o- he's older than those guys too. Yeah, everybody's retweeting this thing of of Daniel whatever. Judge of Port whatever. Yeah. <laughs> I get it last. So I'm not the only one that got got. Like that year that Adam Schefter, somebody spoofed him with just one letter different. Yeah. Uh, always in. Um, um, why am I spacing on uh, Rosenthal, the uh, writer for uh, baseball writer? Who am I? Ken, doing? yeah. Yeah, Ken, Ken Rosenbach. Yeah, Ken totally. Spa- I was going to say uh, uh, Trevor. That's the that's the reliever. <laughs> Um, the dirty Ken Rosen thought like they, they would put Ken Rosen tie T H A I and like people are like like yeah, it looks at least when there were check marks like actual earned verified yeah, I mean, check marks actually... like what are we doing but again just just look at I the... got a check mark now you had to pay for it <laughs> yeah well right and, and look at the like if you're confused look at the follower account mm-hmm. like that that's that's the best way to do it people that's like this, keep all, you know... I, well that was the whole thing with the with the uh, Joe Mixon thing last week everybody who's reporting it we're not like. Legit uh, to me, like I said, legit sources. They weren't. It wasn't Schefter. Yeah. It wasn't Ian Rappaport. You know, Paul Dander <coughs> Jr. is all about what w- was all about the Bengals needing to. Uh, uh, he didn't say anything about it. Well, right, but he, he was like he had the articles all about the Bengals need to move on from him. But so I, I think it's a better than likely chance that they're gonna um, uh, gonna move on from him. But until they do it, you assume he's gonna be on the right. team because they they don't. That's why. That's why I just said last week. I'll, I'll believe it when I see it. I'm not saying it's not going to happen. I just until yeah, I think somebody... this is yeah. This is the dance that has to mm-hmm. has to be done. Apparently, when you get tagged. Um, mm-hmm. Hey, I wonder if I could share a week or two ago. I sent to a friend of mine who is a Bengals fan, but he's not a college football fan. So often I'll come at him before the draft and say some things about college guys I know about that he just he hasn't looked at yet. Um, here was my wish list on March 2nd. And I said, the pick at 18, I said, these, these guys are guys I would take Brock Bowers. We've already talked about JC Latham, the, the Alabama yeah, tackle. That, that, that's the guy that I want. And then Byron Murphy, the, the defensive tackle from Texas. He's my number two that, that I, that I would prefer to have. So another point I would make that goes in with your theory on not paying for free agent running backs if the if the Bengals could get Audric Estime from Notre Dame in the third or fourth round, um, to go with Chase Brown's speed, I would do that in a heartbeat. Audric Estime is possibly the next Jerome Bettis. Like he's big, uh, he ran all over my Buckeyes, so that's that's personal. Um, but that guy's going to be a good back in the league. I guarantee it. Yeah, he's solid. Listed five eleven, two twenty seven. Who is uh, – I'm spacing uh, – the running back from Wisconsin, Allen, Braylon Allen? Yeah, he was hurt a lot last year. I was going to say he was a guy that as a freshman, like that guy looked like a grown man at age 18. I mean, he was he looked 240 pounds, and I thought he was going to like – I'm not down with drafting a running back in the top five, mm-hmm. but I'm like, when this guy's eligible, when this guy's a junior, he's going to be a top five pick. And he kind of – I mean, he's productive, but, yeah, I guess injuries and when you carry that much weight. Even if it's all muscle, that's a lot of weight to be putting. In. Wisconsin likes to run the ball a lot, so. Well, yeah. So, as a, again, as a Big Ten fan, watching them every year and seeing some of the guys that you think are going to be can't miss. Um, Taylor's really, I guess, the only one that's been a can't miss running back in the NFL. There's yeah. been a few guys that have done some good things for a year or two, but. Yeah, Allen's listed at 245 pounds, and he was 245 pounds as a true freshman. That guy was. No, he was built to play right away. That was. Crazy! I'm like, hold this. This guy's a freshman, and he was. I mean, he running all over the field, like six. <laughs> like, man, he's a guy but, that I, I wouldn't mind. Like, I don't. I mean, he declared, didn't he? I, I think, think so. he declared. Like, they've I, I changed their cool. philosophy too. They've gone to that partial um, air raid type offense. Uh, when, yeah, more of the spread. Like, I, I, so um, Luke brought that from UC. Luke brought that with uh, the offensive coordinator from North Carolina. 
So it may be a time just to get out, right? I mean, yeah, they're they're, they're looking for more guys that are more shifty and. Yeah, he still had yeah 180 carries for 5.4 yards a carry last year, 12 touchdowns, so productive. Yeah, I wouldn't mind that guy's a you know. I like shorter, shiftier guys to you know again for the big plays, but you do need that people mover when uh, the, the pile mover when you get down on short yardage. I'd be cool with, uh, cool with them getting him late. Again, somebody do something. This is. I, I'm, dude, I'm, I'm sitting there scrolling. I'm like, this doesn't happen. And I'm like, I, I'm like, why is my screen not refreshing? Nothing's popping. I'm like, oh no, it's it's current. There's just nothing. There's nothing there. I'm like, we had yeah. stuff popping up for like 14 hours ago. I'm like, okay, that. That's yeah, my kids there. are off school today, and I told them I'd come on with you till one, and and probably have some things to talk about, and then <laughs> and then take them to lunch or something. And I'm like, ah, uh. yeah, exactly. I, I I shipped my son out of country. They're on a. They're on spring break, or my son's school is on spring break, and he's on a service, their education service trip in Poland right now. Oh wow! So yeah, How old so is that's he? Uh, fourteen. He's a freshman. Okay. He's he's the only freshman, but hopefully wow, he's not being something. hopefully he's Joe, not being too much. Joe kicked him out. And said, "Look, we got free agency to talk about. <laughs> yeah. We got all this stuff going on. You need to go. I can't have you around here this week. Yeah, man. you if need you to can, go, like, to go Poland. somewhere. <laughs> Just get I out." Got, it's not cheap, but you know, I mean, I got I got things to worry about, man. And NFL is not helping you out at all because not doing anything. No, like I wasn't <laughs> expecting like a, a a ton of moves, but there's been like what four signings. Yeah. Well, all weekend with all those re-signings, I was yeah. I was getting a little worried because that it's kind of like in baseball, the top guys usually set the uh, you know the the pecking order, and and a lot of these top guys have already been re-signed by their original teams. Yeah. A lot of the top guys in baseball are still out there We're halfway through spring training. Is that what this is going to turn crazy. into? We're going to have we're going to be halfway through training camp. It's going to be like Isn't that crazy? week two, and yeah. Christian Wilkins is going to be finally deciding on a uh, on a team. So that's, he that's was I, I, real quick. My uh, my number two picks for uh, for the Bengals should sign. And against th- this one isn't sexy. I had Tommy Townsend punter for the uh, for the Chiefs. This isn't this is a spot they need to improve and. Mm-hmm. You can improve at punter by, without spending a ton of money. Uh, again, nothing about the. You know, I don't think the Chiefs are really going to care that he's going to go to a, uh, a team that's kind of a rival. But Bengals have been kind of wandering. I mean, Huber was mediocre his last couple years. Uh, Drew Christman wasn't anything, and Brad Robbins was terrible last that year. That was bad. That was yeah. so bad. They're going to bring someone else in, and if you're going to not draft you in, one though, they're not drafting I, one. Yeah, it, it would be an undrafted free agent, or just. Go out and get a guy that you know can do it. He was an all pro. Like hunters don't really age until they get old. And of the guys that are out there, he's uh I mean he's only twenty seven anyway. He's the youngest free agent pun- or one of the younger free agent punters out there. Like you need someone who can launch it fifty five yards downfield and, and totally flip field position. Screw this forty, you know, forty year old pop punts that you know are supposed to uh uh with all the hang time so there's no return. No, flip the field position. Rely on you your just- guys did you see the uh the punter ohio state just signed what that <laughs> freakishly gigantic like six seven i'm uc has a six seven guy that looks like he weighs 110 pounds he's 250 this guy's six, seven, 250 and punt like they said 90 yards or something hey, hey sure. yeah. the Bengals have re-signed tight end drew sample okay, okay. Really cool well that's yeah they have to do that one. i think so jeff, jeff perfect timing for you to uh uh comment on that and i, I know you got a boogie out of here but what are your yeah. thoughts on Drew Sample? I, I know we already talked about him. But. No, I'm, I'm fine with it. Like I said, like you said earlier, I'm, I'm hoping they, they re-sign him, which I'm glad they did, and re-sign Tanner Hudson, and then add to the room. If it's Brock Bowers, if it's Noah Fant, add somebody to the room. And, uh, yeah, hopefully hopefully uh, they'll do something else here sometime soon. Yeah, Ben Baby and Charlie Goldsmith both say it's a three-year deal, so his, okay. his time going year to year is over for now. He had, yeah, a good it, year. he had a good year last year. I mean, he did. He showed athleticism. He had that yeah, catch and run. Yeah, I'm like that, that touchdown. Who was like, that guy? Yeah. He's like, wow. But was anyway. that the? Uh, was that Buffalo? It was a night game. I think it was Buffalo. Was it? I remember. Yeah, I think it was Buffalo. Anyway, Jeff, I, you might be right. Final words. Final words. Um, hang in there, Bengals fans. Don't. <laughs> I, I think uh, T Higgins is still gonna be a Bengal. I, I don't think they're gonna trade him. Um, I'm hoping we sign. My my thing is I want to I want to right tackle. <laughs> That's what I want to I want to right tackle. Don't freak out. Even though Bengals Nation loves to freak out about everything, 
the long off season. We got you know lots of shows. I, I got a show at five thirty. If you guys want to jump on and watch that, I got uh, Corey Dillon and Richmond Webb's going to be on there with me, so we'll get their thoughts on the T Higgins situation. Those guys are pretty good, Corey Dillon. Like I'm, I'm still jealous that you're like that you're good buddies with Corey Dillon. <laughs> yeah, he's all right. He's, a, he's I'm a friends guy. with the guy who's friends with Corey Dillon, so I got that going for me. <laughs> I'm, I'm friends with the I guy who's him. friends with uh, Joey Votto, so I got I, you know I got that too. You're like you're, you're good like, buddy, I Carlos Guerrero. Right, exactly. I know him. I know that guy. <laughs> All right, boys, have fun. Yeah, nice talking to you. See ya. Oh, yeah, there we go. Um, yeah, I mean, sample like again, he's become kind of a good safety valve drop. Uh, and and again, like he's part like talk about one a running back who can block, especially on third downs for protection. Well, why not just use you the best pass blocking tight end in the league and have him uh, line up in the backfield? So, what? so they took him in the third round, right, years ago, and it was. The second round, it was it was poo pooed as being way too high, and I think we can all probably agree that with that. But if you had a crystal ball then and said he would still be on the roster in twenty twenty four and going forward, possibly, um, I guess that's a good sign. You know, it was a good pick in that way. Um, certainly, we could always argue there was somebody else they could have gotten that could have had a bigger impact. But but he, he for what they want him to do, and especially remember what the original argument was the type of offense they were going to run. I'm not sure that's still in place with Joe Burrow as your quarterback, but yeah, yeah, that was uh, he was drafted Andy Dalton's last year as starter in 2019. Um, if you look at his physical, like especially uh, his traits and th- um, uh, the speed and the athleticism, it was comparable to a uh, to like George Kittle, and I think that's what they were hoping that they were going to get a guy who was maybe undervalued because he played in a very run heavy offense in Washington, but would be able to make some plays. Co- uh, and, and you know, get first round production, and and it didn't happen, and people still hold that against him. Like the pick happened, like forget about it and move mm-hmm. on. The guy's a valuable, he's a useful player. So well, again, if he got a three year deal, at least up front, he's going to get more money than he 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 has gotten before. So that's yeah. that shows yeah, that he, they still have a lot of trust in him. And yeah, he I mean, he played for veteran minimum last year, so I'm guessing he'll probably double or triple that. And, and cool, absolutely, I love having that guy on the team because. He plays hard and and he does what you know he knows what he's asked of him and does with it. So we got a question here from Dustin. Sorry, just happened on. Do you feel the Bengals don't really know what they're doing with T? It feels like they don't have a solid plan. Just toss the tag on him. Um, I mean they tried to extend him and mm-hmm. what they value him at. Bengals Bengals once they put a value on you, whether monetary or compensatory, that doesn't change. So if they value him at twenty million dollars a year. They're not going to go over that, and well, yeah. I mean the, the tag is twenty two million, right? But I mean whatever they, they they value him at, or if you want this amount of guarantees, Bengals outside of Burrow and Orlando Brown, they don't and and they need to change up a bit, but they don't have a ton, you know, don't put a ton of uh, uh, guarantees. So I I don't they know what they're doing. It's whether it's the smart move, whether it's the prudent move, remains to be seen, but. They're actually playing. Seth, what do you think? Let's break down the position they're in. Okay. They're in a position where they just paid Joe Burrow a lot of money to keep him as their quarterback. And that has to count against the cap in a certain way, even though the cap goes up. They're also in a position where, as much as we love T. Higgins, they have a better receiver on the roster named Jamar Chase. And he's he's a little behind him. He was a first round pick, so he'll have the fifth fifth year option and all that, but they'll soon be negotiating that long term deal. And they likely will give him the long-term deal to the, that, that Jamar Chase deserves. The problem then going forward is there are other teams who may want to pay T. Higgins, these teams that don't have a Jamar Chase, um, they may want to pay him commiserate with a top receiver. And certainly with football being a dangerous sport and all that, T. Higgins' side is saying we don't want just one year at this high t- franchise tag number. We want to be able to start a long-term deal now. So it's they've got to do the dance. They've got to go through this. But th- the position the Bengals in are, is a product of drafting well. Yeah. They drafted him in the second round. You can look back and say he should have been a first rounder. And they but they drafted Joe Burrow. Now he fell in their lap at number one. I get, but they drafted Joe Burrow and they've reached an agreement to pay him long term. And then the next year, the very next year, with the fifth pick, they take Jamar Chase. And again, 
I love T. Higgins. My kids got his jersey. We're big T. Higgins fans. We don't want to go anywhere else. But they have a number one receiver. You, it's going to be tough to pay two receivers at that full number one rate. And they may they may do it. They may pay him as a one B. Um, but as of now, the dance they've got to do from here until the season starts is that of um, waiting on this franchise tag to be signed and by Higgins and getting into camp whenever that might be. Yeah, and this is, I mean, I don't have any issue with how they're doing this. I What I think would be a mistake is for them to do what happened with Jesse Bates and he ends up walking away. And they kind of got... Did, did you see the news? Like they, they were uh, NFL released the uh, uh, compensatory selections for the upcoming draft for uh, free agency. Um, Bengals got two sixth round picks because they're you know the uh, signings who they signed cancels out who was signed away. Um, someone and I can't remember who it was. I, if I were you know actually prepared for what I'm supposed to be doing <laughs> here, I'd have that up. Um, Bengals should have gotten a third round pick for the sign Jesse Bates signing because his pick, like the value that he was signed at like was so much higher that, that hit that the Orlando Brown pick shouldn't have canceled that out. Yeah. Um, so they should have a number or a third round pick, which would be late nineties, I think 98 or something like that instead of a six round pick. So they kind of got screwed. Now NFL has gone back and fixed this once. I don't know what sure. the avenues are. If the Bengals are even going to, you know, I don't know, but they should have. I mean, the guys, the amount of guys that got signed away, and the deals that they got signed away for, they are owed a higher. You know, they should be getting a higher draft pick for uh, uh, than the sixth rounder. And I think that's part of it. But Bengals can't let T. Higgins walk away and just get a sixth round uh, uh, pick. You know, uh, comp pick. They, they, well, but if they win the Super Bowl, <laughs> right? You see, I mean, forever. <laughs> that's the trade off, right? I mean, that, some teams are reactionary. And they would they would have traded T Higgins a year ago, yeah. Um, and certainly we could say, well, see see how T Higgins was hurt a little bit this year, and when he was able to be on the field, sometimes the production wasn't there. Of course, the quarterback play and who was at quarterback sometimes had a lot to do with that. But um, but again, you, you, they're in build now. They're in win now mode, not build now. Win now mode. And the cost of doing business is twenty two point three million to give to T Higgins to hopefully chip in to be part of a Super Bowl championship team. And I know Joe Burrow said the window is his whole career, but going forward after this year, it'll get harder and harder with the cap hit that the quarterback position is, is taking. So your point is very valid on not wanting to walk away from T Higgins with only a fifth or sixth round pick. But if the results are where we want them to be, I think we'd all gladly take it. Yeah. I mean, ultimately it's Bengals shouldn't operate based on what they might what might happen a year down the road. And that that's kind of always been their thing is they have kind of operated about that. The reason that they never go um uh never have completely like tried to manipulate the scalar, salary cap to kind of restructure all these deals so they'd have to have be in calorie the salary cap held down the road. And I would be fine for that. I I'll take five years of having to cut all these veteran guys if they get to raise the Lombardi and have a uh, uh have a parade either down on the banks or Fountain Square, wherever the heck they would have one. But it's, you know, I don't know. I it's I still think for the best health of for the you know of, of the team, I think trading him, especially this year with the wide receiver crop, I think that's I think it's just the smartest move because you're still able to, you know, to get an impact receiver. You have it hurts that you're also losing Tyler Boyd, but Tyler Boyd wasn't really wasn't a huge piece of the offense last year. He had a let's be he honest, had some he had drops that really hurt them. Yeah, it's. I mean, you don't want to say he cost them the um, uh, the Texans game because the Bengals not covering anybody, not covering Noah Brown twenty yeah. yards downfield time and time again, and letting Devin Singletary run all over the field is basically what cost him. But with as bad as the defense played, he makes an easy catch in the end zone. Bengals win that game. So it's you know, but yeah, you don't want to lose two of your top three guys in the same season. I like Yosh- uh, Yoshivas. He's not ready to be your number two receiver, Charlie Jones, you know, they, they would need to add um, another veteran receiver if they were to do something with him. But I don't know. We'll see what happens. Well, and certainly Orlando Brown didn't come on the first day of, of free agency last year, but yeah. it was still a shock when it did come. So they've got that in them as well. And 
they keep things close to the vest as well, probably as well as any organization. So that might be another reason why we're not seeing, you know, other than the agent letting it out that T once traded. Yeah. Um, we're not seeing a whole lot as far as who they might sign. Yeah, they're they're the most closed mouth, and, and and that's part of it, you know, with literally being just one family, and then Duke Tobin, who's I think their adopted son. Um, <laughs> yeah, no, nothing gets leaked from from their end ever. Uh, do have another signing. Uh, Broncos signed uh, safety Brandon Jones, three years upwards of twenty two million, uh, twelve and a half million guaranteed. That's good news for the Bengals. That's a very buyer's market type deal with the Bengals again needing a safety and there being a ton out there and I think that's going to with the amount of guys out there it's really going to compress their deal I think you're right and I think I was joking a little bit earlier but I, I really believe safety is the running back of the defense it's a it's a position yeah. that doesn't get paid very highly it's a position that usually doesn't get drafted that highly and so um last year I think you saw Jesse Bates get the money he did and even Von Bell and on his third contract um, they got the money they did in part because it, there, it wasn't a flooded market like it is now. Yeah. And so that could be very beneficial to the Bengals, as you said. Yeah. Good on Jesse Bates for getting the contract that he did, but that contract isn't getting signed anywhere near that uh, six years, 64 million. It, it, if that were done this year. And again, Von, Von Bell may, maybe get half of that, uh, half that deal. The, uh, the Aaron Wilson is reporting that the, the Cody Ford numbers, he was announced the other day. Um, Jay Morrison says it's a slight raise from 1.1 million last year. He's making 1.3 million this year. Yeah. So slightly, a little bit of a bump of the uh, vet minimum. So, and again, he's, I don't know. I was surprised when, um, I can't remember what game it was. I think it was the Arizona game that Orlando Brown went out with the hamstring or some, some minor injury. He was back the next week, but Cody Ford was the first guy off to play left tackle, which was really surprising because yeah. they brought him in to be a guard, but it's fine. Like, I, you know, he's useful. And he's Orlando Brown. I mean, they went to Oklahoma together, so yeah, you know, they vouch they vouch for each other, I guess. Yeah, exactly. Uh, Dustin got another question. Lions are going hard at Reader. Be surprised if would not be surprised if we lose him. Yeah, we were talking about this earlier, and I'm surprised that his market. I'd be, I, I you know who, who knows what it's going to end up being, but I'd be surprised if his market accumulates this early because. Mm -hmm. Where is he with, you know, his rehab? So. Yeah, I mean, he's got to show that he's healthy. And I think that's why I said earlier, I think he could, I think he could earn more if he waits till June. And I think the longer he waits, the better the chance he comes back to the Bengals. I, if he gets signed before the draft, the Bengals aren't getting him back. Yeah, exactly. And, and, and I don't think I would, you know, I, I'm cool with him. I, I would love to have him back, but. I would not be upset at the Bengals for not signing him. If someone were, you know, if someone were to come out and sign him in the next couple of days, like I get it. Bengals, you know, Bengals were a terrible defense with him last year. Not, you know, without him. <laughs> yeah. I mean, obviously you don't want to make a weak, weak spot even worse, but you know, it, you don't, you don't know where he is, but we'll never know the answer to this, but had he not, had he, had he not gotten hurt the way he did, um, the, the chances the Bengals would have kept them anyway because they don't do the third contract usually at a, at a yeah. larger rate. Uh, that's why Von Bell is gone. Yeah. Um, the chances they would have signed him anyway were not that high. I don't think, I think he would, I think he may have already been announced today signing somewhere else like the lions or somewhere. If he never got hurt. And I don't think the Bengals likely would have got, gotten to bring him back then. And actually him getting hurt, maybe raised their chances of bringing him back at a lower vet, you know, maybe a pillow deal, um, you know, one year uh, with some incentives. That kind of thing. I was um, absolutely going, was just going to absolutely add that that uh, him getting hurt uh, like makes it like more likely that he comes back to the Bengals. I still don't think he probably is, but I, I, you know it's a much higher uh, for, um, much higher chance. Uh, Jaguars signing uh, wide receiver Gabe Davis to a three year deal. Mm. That Jaguars have a lot of weapons. Are you surprised that uh, uh, Trevor Lawrence hasn't? taken the leap to become like that guy yet he was i mean when he came out of high school when he was in college he was like the best college prospect and immediately this guy's gonna go one one when he's eligible and he did he was you know he had a great career clemson went first overall to the jags but he's been good yeah i, I you know for someone with his all of his physical ability he hasn't like he, he's been i, I, I don't want to say underwhelming and he's gonna get a huge contract uh in the next handful of months, but 
I, I kind of thought he'd be, you know, that, that he'd be up in that upper tier. He's not. He's like he's second or third tier. I wonder if he didn't have what Joe Burrow did on the record, especially as Bengals guys, uh, if we'd be a little more friendly toward the progression of Trevor Lawrence because Trevor, w- Trevor was that can't miss guy from day one, as you mentioned. Joe had to really go through the process, right, of of getting to LSU, played one year at LSU that was okay, and then he was just amazing that last yeah. year. Yeah. Um, but Trevor Lawrence stepped in partway through the first year and took a team to the national championship game. And um, certainly as a Buckeye fan whose cousin went to Clemson, I have a hard time um, being objective here with, with, with that part of it. But, but I think if we didn't have a, the right now mentality that we have as a society, (laughs) um, I think we didn't have that. And then we didn't have a Joe Burrow who tore his ACL as a rookie and came back a second year and went to the Super Bowl and had, has beaten Patrick Mahomes multiple times and went to uh, the FC championship game, his third year in the league. If we didn't have that, I think we'd probably say, well, Trevor Lawrence is probably on track. And you mentioned he has weapons. I just I, he does, but I think they they seem to they seem to continue to assign number three wide receivers <laughs> um, and, and and put them in. And Gabe Davis, I thought he took a real turn down last year with the Bills. I didn't think he was nearly as good last year as he was the year before. Um, he's always been a name that I thought. Well, you know, maybe two years ago I would have thought, well, if if Boyd's gone, maybe you bring him in um to Cincinnati but then as it's as I watched him play last year I didn't think I was underwhelmed completely um so I don't know the Jaguars the Jaguars uh weapons probably you know one to five as far as receivers go are good um but they don't have a Jamar Chase and they don't have a T Higgins so uh I don't know I like I said I think at the end of the day if, if there wasn't a Joe Burrow on this planet um Trevor Lawrence maybe getting a little more slack I maybe, but then you think about how many quarterbacks have come in and, and performed pretty well. Now that was an underwhelming uh, quarterback class, twenty one class, with uh, Justin Fields, Trey Lance, um, Wilson, yeah, Zach Wilson, and Mac Jones, Mac Jones, yeah, I mean, an underwhelming class. But look at the twenty twenty class. You have Joe Burrow. You know, obviously we're you know we're we're probably higher than everyone else on him because he's our guy. But um, Tua Tagovailoa, he's he's been really mm-hmm. good. Um, Justin Herbert, people get on him, but his numbers and maybe he's Dan, Dan Marino, who knows, but the guy just puts up a ton of numbers. Um, and, and then you have Jalen hurts. So it's, you know, yeah, I remember in 21, a lot of the, uh, like even PFF folks that uh, Chris Collinsworth would quote. And then some of the draft guys, um, at the time they said they would have had, uh, Trevor Lawrence slotted behind Joe Burrow, but ahead of everybody else in the 20 draft. So by that expectation, you're right. Perhaps he should have done more. But let's remember, uh, he was saddled with Urban Meyer as a rookie. Yeah, and that, that's, that did not that's go well at all. So that's an entire – I mean, you could argue that's worse than what Joe Burrow had happen in game 11 where he tore his ACL because uh-huh. at least up to that point, Joe had kind of gotten into the system and they had worked on some things and – had some flashes, right? Well, yeah. then in year two, he went to the playoffs and did a good job, Trevor Lawrence did. Um, so I don't know. I guess I think you're probably right, but I think as far because of expectations, he was expected to be from day one walking into Clemson, he was accept, expected to be much more. And uh, he's not. He He's not Peyton Manning who had kind of a mediocre year in year one and then was off and running with a Hall of Fame career. He he isn't the Peyton Manning that that maybe people thought he would be. Yeah, he's he's a good but not great quarterback, and, and it's just maybe I don't. I kind of expected more, and, and again, like it's you know you're holding up high standards, but when you're drafted a one one, you had those high expectations. Mm-hmm. Um, he still has the most fabulous hair of anybody in the NFL. <laughs> I mean, the, the guy has hair commercials, and not just because he's got a gigantic um, rat's nest like Troy Polamalu did. I mean, he he has. Silky, luscious hair. <laughs> well, I guess let's think about though. Like, w- would you take him over third year or fourth, going into fourth year? Jared Goff. He was a number one pick. That was that's a weird class with Jared Goff and um, uh, Carson Wentz because those guys had pretty early success and then yeah. just they had team the, success. Uh, 
Yeah, but I mean, even individually, I mean, um, Carson Wentz was, I mean, yeah, he got hurt when they, you know, when they won the title with him injured, but he was like, like he was pro, I'm not pro doesn't mean a whole heck of a lot anymore, but he had a great season. Now, Jared Goff, I'm happy to see his, I don't want to say renaissance, but I'm, I'm happy right. to see him have uh, success afterwards because, I mean, he kind of just got dumped so they could get Matthew Stafford and it worked out well for everybody. And for all sides, but of the year ball. to year, it's, it's like the NBA. Like, if you're tanking this year when there's no Wimbanyana, then you're crazy. You're, you know, what are you tanking for? Um, yeah. But, but it's the same with quarterbacks at the top of drafts. Now, Bryce Young, we're still out, out on him, I think, but, but certainly CJ Stroud looks like a can't miss guy at this point. Yeah. Damn. My number one pick for the Bengals free agent is Christian Wilkins, and he just went to the Raiders. Mm. That's upsetting. That was the one that all the the quote unquote experts that cover the Bengals didn't think would happen anyway because of the cost. Yeah, it's uh, four years, eighty four million guaranteed. Wow, one hundred ten base, uh, and David Mulligata <laughs> as the. Uh, as the yeah, agent. He first. Yeah. yeah. So, wow, he did that. Good, I mean, good on him money wise, but okay. Like it, it, there was there were rumors that he was uh talking to the Browns, so Browns don't need anybody else on Yeah, we don't need them line. to have anybody else on the line. God, they've, they've got enough freak shows. That's so we'll see what happens from we'll see what happens from here on out with uh with the rest of the rest of the guys. And there, there's still plenty of guys out there. Um We'll see again. This is just underwhelming. Yeah. <laughs> or whatever you want to say. And there's still um plenty of guys out there. I don't who's I'll ask you this. Who's your number one pick of who you, you know, of who you, who you'd like the Bengals to uh to pick up? On free agents? Yeah, free agency, sorry. Yeah. I, I'm I'm in a tight spot here because some of those guys have already been re-signed by their original teams. Um I wouldn't argue with Fant. Um Dress as a need. I, d- I didn't do enough research to tell you what tackles are available and who I think they should take or try to sign. Um, I think by by need, the right tackle and tight end are the two biggest needs, although the defense, you know, I, I don't blame the Bengals for not paying Christian Wilkins $84.75 million. In that, that's, that's, a, that's a lot of guarantees. Big pill to swallow, man. <laughs> Joe Goodberry uh, tweeted, he averages like four sacks a year, LMAO. Um, of course, he, he had however many of them last year, which is perfect timing going into your uh, – Yeah, going but, into but a, a guy like this, and he must be younger than Reader, but if Reader was yeah. healthy, what would Reader be getting right now? My goodness. Probably 20 per. Yeah. Uh, I mean, Wilkins, Wilkins is 28, so he's a little younger. Um, I think now – and again, I, I don't know how much interest the Bengals going to have because he's a little bit older. Uh, Leonard Williams mm-hmm. – uh, I mean, Went to the Saints, or went to the Saints, went to the Seahawks, but formerly of the Giants. That guy's a monster. Um, and that's the guy, if, if you want to make an impact, you want that interior pass rush, that's the guy you go. That's the guy you go with. I mean, that's, you know, he's not Geno Adkins, totally different body styles, but I would love to see uh, love to see them pivot to that. Even, you know, even with, you know, if Reader's going to be gone, that's fine. Find someone who can uh, give you seventy percent of that in the draft, or you know, someone on second or third wave of free agency. Go after that guy. Would you? I mean, Tony Pollard's gone. I wouldn't have necessarily wanted him either. I I, I kind of like the idea of Swift after I saw what he did for the Eagles last year. Yeah. Um, Austin Eckler. You know, he's a different type of back. He's a receiving type of back. I think Chase Brown could morph into that himself. Um, at the running back position, I just don't know. Maybe, yeah, they're not going to pay for Josh Jacobs at this age. So I think you've got to address running back at the draft. I think, honestly, and he's going to come pretty cheap, even though he's coming off of the uh, his first round pick coming off his contract. I like uh, uh, Edwards Allaire. Yeah. And that's he's, been the that's, you know, that's been the hot rumor because of he's, he's good friends with Burrow and Chase yep. and. Yep, he's he's off the champion uh, the uh, title team. I, I I think he didn't fit into Andy Reid's offense like Reid thought he would. Yeah, um, yeah when they, they drafted spent, him so they, high. Yeah, they spent premium value on him. They got him in the first round. Yeah, so I I think at the end of the day he might fit better with the Bengals, and he doesn't have that much off the tires, right? The tread's still there because 
he doesn't have the, the carries because of uh, Pacheco coming in there and being the main guy. Yeah, I mean, he was always – even, you know, when he was, uh, they had Kareem Hunt around. Um, they have – let's see, he has – in four seasons, he has 441 rushing attempts, 89 receptions. So you're talking 500 and – under 550 uh, touches in four seasons. He's only 24. He's going to be 25 here in – looks like a month. Yeah, and I don't think um, it would cost that much either, comparatively no. speaking, because I mean, of, he doesn't have the track vet minimum. Yeah, you yeah. can get him for, for vet minimum. They have him listed – for his um, uh, market at like one point, I just had it here and I changed pages. And again, spot track is so overwhelmed today. <laughs> Where were we? I can't even, I can't even go back pages. Anyway, they, very affordable deal. I, I think he's somebody considering his size. I know the Bengals like to have their larger backs by and large. I mean, Trevion Williams is small, but they like having their bigger, Bell Cal type backs. I mean, Chase Brown is, you know, pretty stout. Um, yeah, they got market value at 1.6. I would absolutely do that. Oh, yeah. I, I guess that is that is the exception I would make. And and I, I, I don't know. I I didn't really get in on the Mixon discussion. I, I think I think it's probably time to walk away from Mixon, in my opinion. I thought so last year. It's Again, he's, he's fine. He can still help a team. But he'd be a lot more valuable if this were 2004 instead of 2024. Well, but he they they've had to basically adjust how they've used him. And he did a great job 2 years ago at catching the ball more than ever. Yeah. And um and and again, he's always going to get if you need 2 yards, he'll get them. Yeah. Um but but he's not he's not breaking the the longer runs anymore and you know, he he was a guy that could really take the ball up and down the field at, at one time when he was younger. His still his longest career rush is sixty one yards. Like that's, yeah. I don't want to say underwhelming because. But he, I he returned punts and kicks to Oklahoma, field. you know, and yeah. he was he was again as a, as a Buckeye fan he he ran one back in the twenty was it sixteen or seventeen down there at Oklahoma High State won the game. That was Noah Brown had four touchdown catches. <laughs> he got drafted that day basically. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that, that'll that'll definitely help your uh, draft status playing a premium or versus a premier. At a conference opponent. So, all right, so let me ask this side here. Dustin's got another question about uh, Doug Peterson, a wildly overrated coach, hasn't unlocked uh, Trevor at all. I mean, obviously, Peterson won the uh, Super Bowl in Philadelphia, and then they let him go and he moved on down to um, Jacksonville. I think he's a decent coach. It, it's football coaches to me are like baseball managers, they're five good five bad and the rest are kind of just in the middle it just like they're as good as the roster around them yeah there were a lot of people though when when the eagles won the, the super bowl th that wanted to give frank reich more credit yeah but frank reich's burned out at two places and he got fired in year one at carolina this past year now we could argue if that's fair or not and dave tepper being a unreasonable owner and all that <laughs> he's paying three coaches right now Look. um i i don't know i i think 2022 the job that um doug peterson did with that team was pretty remarkable uh, that jaguars team um they were right there with the chiefs right in the in the yeah in the divisional round yeah that and was the Chiefs uh, went ahead and won and got to play the the Bengals and, and beat the Bengals. um that's when mahomes got knocked out right mahomes Chad was Hattie. hurt todd collins had to play for a little bit and, and you could argue what that you could argue you're right. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm mixing up uh, Michigan quarterbacks. Michigan quarterbacks. <laughs> uh, Chad Henney. They're both about the same age, not. Um, yeah, yeah. But no, so you could argue that Peterson didn't take advantage of that opportunity. But on the other hand, they went toe to toe with the eventual Super Bowl champs. And um, I, I'm impressed with that, that 2022 season. And this past year didn't go that w the right way for them. And maybe you could put down the coach because a lot of times. You know, what do you do the year after you you go somewhere? That, that's why Zach Taylor deserves some credit to me because 2021, they go to the Super Bowl, and, and 2022, they're on the doorstep again. Um, you know, he gets credit to, for that, in my opinion. And so if you want to take Dustin, Doug Peterson credit away, that's fine. But I was really impressed with what he did with that team that he inherited from Urban Meyer. Yeah, and I think coming down the stretch, Lawrence was injured. Like, like he, you know, mm -hmm. he was playing hurt. 
So, and when I obviously the Bengals saw it here, when you don't have your quarterback at, you know, at peak health, like you're, you're limited. So I, yeah, they crapped out and absolutely, just, you know, they had a, you know, they had the title division title and everything locked up and they had let it slip away from them. But I, I don't think he's one of the top five. I don't think he's one of the five good coaches, but I don't think he's one of the five bad coaches. I think he's in the middle and you, you know, you put enough uh, tools around him. Again, they're, they're adding a lot of receivers. They've got Evan Ingram and Calvin Ridley and, um, Christian Kirk. Well, I forgot about him mm-hmm. for a second. Like they, you know, they they got plenty of guys. So maybe they're trying to do the Bengals, uh, Bengals model, just loading up with the amount of uh, uh, tools around them. I'll be happy to take Evan Ingram off their hands if yeah. if they need to make some space. That guy, he had almost a thousand yard receiving last year. He's a dude. You know, remember though, he won a Super Bowl with Nick Foles as a starting quarterback, and yeah. they defeated the Patriots. Was it the year before the they beat the Patriots ended up beating the Falcons or the year after? Like it was and, and 18, I think it was so before. So they won a close game against the Patriots in a Super Bowl, and that's not easy to do, as yep. as proved by twenty eight to three. They came back and defeated the Falcons. So <laughs> um I've got to give in but if I was a Jaguars fan, I I could probably make a hundred arguments why I don't like Doug Peterson. So uh, I think your point is probably correct. He's not elite, but uh, he's fine. <laughs> the year after, twenty-eight to three was uh, fifty-one, and then fifty-two was uh, yeah. He was over the Patriots, or, so and the Philly special play was cool. And and as I mentioned, Nick Foles was a Super Bowl winning quarterback. So that, that still floors me. He's he's up there with uh, um. Oh man, Hostetler. Uh, Hilfer, Hostetler, Brad Johnson. <laughs> uh, the guys that are just like, that guy won a title? Yeah. And it, it took John Elway until he was like 75 years old. Dan Marino never won one. Man. Well, but that's why we probably shouldn't always give the quarterback so much credit because certainly when Dilfer won it, it was, they didn't score different a touchdown game. for like seven games in a row during that regular season. Yeah, to- totally different different game in two thousand and one. I mean, they were they were terrible offense. It was hand the ball off and throw it to Shannon Sharp and don't screw it up, and then yeah. let Reed Lewis uh, and Ed Reed go take care of business. But is that right? Ed Reed was still there, or was there at that time? Was oh he? yeah. Okay. I Wait, remember when they won the Super Bowl in two thousand? Yeah, in two thousand, that was. I'm thinking no, Ed Reed was not there yet. Yeah, he was still at Miami. That, that was Rod. Rod Woodson was there. Okay, I'm look, trying to look at the roster. I'm like, he, I couldn't remember. He was. Uh, Ed Reed was on the 2002. Was he on the 2002 Hurricanes? No, he, Ed Reed won in 2001. They okay. won the national title. And then when Ohio State beat them in 02, um, Sean Taylor. Taylor. Sean Taylor okay. was the top, was the the, the big time safety. With, with was the guy? The guy's name was Blades, I think, was the other safety. Yeah. They had about 175 draft picks on those two teams. And they only won one title. That that's what floors me. Well, they probably should have won in two thousand. They they lost early in that season, and then they railed off all those wins. Yeah, um, I, I I will still argue that they should have won in twenty two. That flag came about mm-hmm, five sure. minutes late. <laughs> but but realistically, <laughs> Ohio State had a lot of younger guys on that team that eventually got drafted. Like if you go go back and look at the number of draft picks between Miami and Ohio State total, it, it's unreal. I you mean, can fill like, out a pretty good, pretty good NFL run outside of quarterback. Yeah, Ken Dorsey. <laughs> yeah, Ken, Ken Dorsey and Craig Krenzel. Like neither of those guys did. Uh, and they both played in the league, so good for them. But sure, I got a immaculate grid wrong once re, uh, a few months ago because the Bengals remember they signed Craig Krenzel. Yeah, um, and he but he never played in a game, so it was Bears Bengals, and I was like, oh, Craig Krenzel. <laughs> And I, he I started. Lost that I, I knew he was on the. I knew he. Uh, Bengals had him. I didn't know he actually didn't appear in a game. Yeah, he, he started yeah. games for the Bears, but he never played in a game, and he got in a game injury settlement from the Bengals. I figured there would have been mop up duty or something. All right, Seth. Well, this has been a very underwhelming. As, as soon as we sign off here, there's going to be a flurry. Oh sure. Bengals, the T Higgins is going to get traded. DJ Reader is going to get signed, and <laughs> Joe Burrow is going to like. I'm not. I'm not even going to say anything negative about Joe. No, Burrow's. no, no, no. <laughs> that, that, you could be like <laughs> Chad when he said Hunter Green's going to get hurt. Right, and I, I will get absolutely <laughs> dragged. So I did not mention number nine's name. So Okay. But I think, again, this this was so much slower than I expected. Not even just with the Bengals overall. 
Just, right. There's, there's been, yeah. what, seven guys that have been, you know, and again, like free agency doesn't even technically count until, you know, it doesn't even start for another two, uh, two days, but yeah. They miss no more, so. They're allowed to tamper now. <laughs> yeah. They, they've been, they've been talking since, uh, since, uh, final whistle in the, at, at the end of overtime on Super Bowl Sunday. So well, that's why it's funny when, <laughs> when they sign Kappa and Karis, you know, it's like, Literally 101 PM, we're, we're announcing it. <laughs> wow, amazing how quickly they can make those phone calls and get them taken care of. So yeah. All right, Seth. Any final thoughts before we uh, before you get on out of here? No, I I'm not that surprised. I guess as I said, because of all the all the players that re-signed with their previous teams this weekend, and I guess as as I uh, kick it back to you, I might say something we didn't say earlier. The raise cap could have something to do with that. You know, like. The, the fact that the cap's grown so much, not just last year to this year, which is the biggest ever, but really over the last two years, it's grown significantly. And you think about that, and uh, it might be easier to pay a Chris Jones if you're Kansas City now that, that the cap is going to be higher than you may, might have anticipated. So that's my guess as to why that is, but it's also making this afternoon less fun. And um, like we said, hopefully – Hopefully, for the Bengals' sake, to me, they they track down a a right tackle in the next few weeks, and uh, maybe some defensive tackles as well. And again, Clyde Edwards Hilaire, we both agree, would be the perfect running back signing. And if they don't get him, I think we wait till the draft. Yeah, most likely. So, I guess one more thing I'd ask: Would you predict? I I think they will cut Joe Mixon on the 18th or by the 18th. Do you predict that too, or do you? I think as soon as they get somebody agreed or, you know, that they agree, come to an agreement with a running back um, or, so, you know, as soon as they come to someone who's, you know, they're going to need that money to have earmarked somewhere. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, I come the 18th. I don't expect him to be on this roster. It, it makes too much sense for him to be uh, uh, to just for them to move on to him. Like they, they already renegotiated. He's not going to take less money. Right. So. So well, you know, so fair, wow. Farewell. So long. Elviter Zane. So long. Okay, I got damn it. Oh, no. It's been too long since I've seen the sound of music. So long, farewell. Alvita saying goodbye. That's it. So. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Seth. This has been fun. I appreciate you coming on, talking uh talking free agency. But we will get out of here for now. Everyone, check us hey, out riverfront.com. Big one tomorrow. Uh, releasing the next Red Leg Roundtable. Scott Williamson. Ooh, 1999 Rookie of the Year. I talked to him last Reds or uh, last Reds Fest. Got okay. his autograph. Absolutely, like an absolute fun guy to watch. You never knew where, uh, how far in front of the plate the uh, splitter was going to bounce, but you knew they weren't going to hit it. I'll say he said some things that most people might not have said. So, so <laughs> the stories he tells, um, both in his opinions about certain players and managers and uh, front office members. Um, as well as maybe some of the colorful language he used uh, <laughs> in the interview, um, it, it, it's certainly something that's worth checking out. It's a, it's a loaded with great stories, and he is a talker. So uh, it's it's a nice uh, long red leg round table edition. I can't wait, Seth. You do a fantastic job getting the getting the guys you have, and Elson drop with the interview. So everyone, we'll see y'all next next time. All right, thanks,